very liquidy. This one's the runniest out of all of them. It almost feels like a gel type of serum as opposed to a cream or a lotion. It rubs in really easily and it feels really hydrating. Hey everyone, it's Dr. Joyce Park, board certified dermatologist. Welcome back to my channel. And we're going to continue our series on sunscreens. Two or three weeks ago, I started this whole series off by talking about and reviewing all the viral sun sticks. Then after that, I talked about how to reapply sunscreen over makeup. Last week, I talked about how to transition your skincare routine to summer skincare. And then this week, we're gonna do a two-part series. This is the first part on reviewing Asian sunscreens. I get a lot of requests all the time to review a variety of Asian sunscreens, whether that's Korean sunscreens or Japanese sunscreens, for good reason. I mean, these sunscreens are so elegant and the reason why they're so good is because they use a lot of the sunscreen filters that are not available in the US. The FDA has not approved new sunscreen filters in a very long time. And so we are all super jealous of all these amazing new photo stable filters that are available in the rest of the world, like in Europe and in Korea and Japan and the rest of Asia. These filters are photostable, meaning they don't break down in sunlight. And they also oftentimes have extended coverage, meaning that they offer better UVA and or UVB coverage. You know, we know that UVA and UVB rays kind of span a number of wavelengths from about 290 nanometers to about 310 or 315 nanometers, that's UVB. And then about 310 or 315 nanometers all the way up to 400 nanometers counts as UVA. And different sunscreen filters will only block or absorb at certain wavelengths, which is why a lot of sunscreens kind of need a combination of filters because maybe one filter mainly absorbs UVB, so it needs another filter to absorb that UVA. So in the US, we see a lot of different combinations of filters, and it's the same way in Asian sunscreens and European sunscreens, but the difference is that these newer sunscreen filters available in the rest of the world really are just more elegant, they're more stable, and then they also have expanded range of coverage and absorption for UV rays. So today we're going to review four different Korean sunscreens, two from Purito, which is the Daily Soft Touch and the Daily Go-To Sunscreen, the COSRX Aloe Sun Cream, and the Misha Essence Sun Milk. So let's get into it. All right, so the first one we're going to step into is the Purito Daily Go-To Sunscreen. This is broad spectrum, meaning it blocks UVA and UVB rays, SPF 50 plus and PA with four pluses. They say it is weightless and scentless, so it's a fragrance-free sunscreen. And this one actually has a combination of chemical filters as well as physical filters. So the list of filters that this has is Tinosorb S, which is a great kind of all-around sunscreen filter, Juvenal T150, which is a UVB filter, Juvenal A+, which is a great UVA blocker. The physical ingredient it contains is titanium dioxide, which we know blocks both UVA and UVB, but it actually doesn't block UVA1, which is those higher UVA wavelengths. We're talking more like like in the high 300s to 400 nanometer wavelengths. So it doesn't get all the way up there in the spectrum like zinc oxide does. So this one is supposed to be more of a lightweight, fast absorbing gel type texture. So let's try it out. On first glance, it definitely is more of like a lightweight gel texture. It absorbs in very quickly, like, and it feels very hydrating, but also very lightweight. So this is very easy to rub in. It doesn't leave any sort of white cast. So I like it. I think this is a great option for summertime when you're probably oily and a little bit sweaty anyways, and you don't want to be using something that's really hydrating. This is also more of a gel type consistency rather than a cream or a lotion. So I think this would be great for those with combination to oily type skin. This sunscreen also includes Centella Asiatica, also known as Gotu Cola, which is a traditional medicinal plant from India that has long time been used for its wound healing properties and it also has some anti-inflammatory properties to help treat conditions like eczema. This also contains maticasticide, which is the active ingredient or the active component that you find in centella as well, also helpful for wound healing. Now that it's been a couple of minutes since I applied it, I will say that I think it's like slightly sticky. I'm going to try the other one from Purito and let you guys know what I think. The second sunscreen that we're going to try from Purito today is the Daily Soft Touch Sunscreen. This is also broad spectrum SPF 50 plus, PA 4 pluses. This one is touted as being more gentle, breathable, and this one is supposed to be, they call it a 
matte sunscreen, but also really helping you moisturize your skin. And this one it consists of chemical sunscreen filters, so there's no titanium dioxide in this one. The filters in this one consist of Uvenol A+, which has UVA coverage, Uvenol T150, which has UVB coverage, Tinosorb S, which is broad spectrum, and Tinosorb M, another favorite, which is also broad spectrum and very stable. This one also contains a lot of extra goodies, which just looking at the ingredient list already, I'm starting to like this one more than the last one, but this one also contains Bisabolol, which is anti-inflammatory. It has panthenol for soothing, and it also has tocopherol for antioxidant properties, as well as that same Centella Asiatica that the other one had for its anti-inflammatory kind of antioxidant properties. This one also has all these extra things for hydration, like it has multiple different types. It has five different types of ceramides. It has cholesterol. It also has some glycerin, which is a humectant. So I think this one is probably going to be more moisturizing. Definitely feels creamier than the last one. It's not a matte sunscreen. Like I don't feel like my hand looks matte. I think it looks really moisturized, but as you can see, it's very easy to rub in. Nice finish, no white cast. I wouldn't expect it to since it's all chemical. Okay, now that I've tried both the Purito sunscreens and given it a few minutes to settle in, I feel like they're pretty similar actually in terms of their stickiness and their tackiness on the skin. I feel like during summertime, I probably would not choose this because during the summertime, I would like to opt for a more matte finish, especially if I'm gonna be sweaty or outside for a long time. But yeah, I feel like they're both pretty similar in terms of their sticky finish. Overall, I would say they both rub in really easily. I like the ingredients that they have. Between the two, I think that the Daily Soft Touch sunscreen has more extra goodies like the ceramides and the panthenol and antioxidants and all of that. But it really is kind of a personal preference. I would say they both apply very similarly. Next up, we're gonna try the COSRX Aloe Soothing Sun Cream. So the main call out ingredient from the brand is the aloe, which is meant to be soothing. This one is similarly also SPF 50 plus, just like the Purito ones. This one is PA plus plus plus, so only three pluses. The other ones were four pluses. And just as a brief reminder or a brief refresher, the PA rating is really a sign of UVA blockage because it measures persistent pigment darkening or PPD, darkening of the skin in response to UVA exposure. You know, if you are someone who's prone to hyperpigmentation, melasma, hyperpigmentary disorders, if you're pregnant, you might want to choose one with a higher PA rating. This one also has glycerin, which is that humectant, which can help you hold on to water. And it has tocopherol, that same antioxidant in it. So let's try it out. So off the bat, this one is a little bit chunkier, a little bit harder to rub in. I could see that I'm kind of having to put more effort into rubbing this in and it is leaving a little bit of a white color on my skin here. Let's just continue rubbing in. Okay, I think we're getting down to it. And you can see that maybe it doesn't show up as much on the camera, but this hand feels and looks a little bit whiter than this hand. All right, so this sunscreen also definitely has a scent. It's pretty notable. I'm someone who doesn't mind scent. In fact, I kind of like it. I'm not used to using sunscreens that have a light scent, but this has a healthy smelling kind of veggie green smoothie type smell. It smells actually pretty good. It reminds me of my favorite cleanser, the Youth to the People Spinach and Kale Cleanser. It also has kind of this green smoothie healthy smell. I don't mind it, but I'm saying if you are sensitive to scent, and you don't want scent in your sunscreens, this may not be the one for you. It came out a little bit chunkier than I thought it would, a little bit thicker, and it definitely took a longer time to rub in. And just to note, I did wash my hands in between the Purito one and these next two that I'm gonna test, because otherwise my hand would just be so sticky. It feels nice. I will say this one doesn't feel as sticky as the Purito ones, even though it took longer to rub in, but it did leave my skin looking a little bit white. I don't know if I'd be reaching for this one as often, to be totally honest. I'm pretty lazy and I don't have much time in the mornings. So I like sunscreens that are just really easy to rub in. And this one took a little bit longer. Okay, the last one we're gonna review today is from Misha. This is their Essence Sun Milk with SPF 50 plus PA three pluses, like we mentioned before, three pluses compared to the four pluses from Purito. And this one also has all chemical filters, which I will list here. And this is similar to the COSRX one in that it also has aloe. So let's go ahead and try it out. Very liquidy. This one's the runniest out of all of them. 
It almost feels like a gel type of serum as opposed to a cream or a lotion. It rubs in really easily and it feels really hydrating. So texture wise, I liked this one a lot. It was the runniest out of these four that I tried today and it rubbed in really easily, almost like a serum. However, when I look at the ingredients for the sunscreen filters, most of the ingredients they use are chemical filters that we have available in the US and they're totally fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with them, but I would like to see more of the newer filters. If, we're, if I'm going to go to the trouble of getting an Asian sunscreen, I'd want one of the newer filters that are more stable and offer a higher range of coverage. So if I had to pick between all of these four, I liked the Misha Essence Sun Milk texture the best. If we had to go with just ingredients though, my choice would probably be the Purito Daily Soft Touch Sunscreen because it has all those extra goodies and I really like the filters that it has. It has the Tinosorb S, the Tinosorb M, and the Juvenal A and B and it just feels like a more comprehensive sunscreen. I also liked how it felt hydrating. I know I said it felt a little bit sticky and tacky at the end, but that might be because it's summertime and I'm literally sitting in this 80 degree room sweating right now making this video with two huge lights shining on me. So I'm not gonna give up on this one. I'm gonna give it another go. I would say my least favorite out of all of these will probably be the Aloe Soothing Sun Cream from CosRx because it was chunkier and just took a little bit longer to rub in. And I'm being a little nitpicky here because none of these four left a significant white cast the way that mineral sunscreens in the US do. But out of the four, this one just took more effort and time to rub in so ain't nobody got time for that. Also received something in the mail today that I've been waiting for for such a long time. This one, this is from Round Lab and oh my gosh, all the writing is in Korean, but basically it's a sunscreen compact. So it allows you to reapply non-tinted sunscreen. And I'm just gonna go ahead and open it up because I'm really curious how it looks. I know it wasn't even supposed to be part of this video, but you guys get a bonus for watching till now. And I'm really curious how it's gonna look over my foundation. So it's a cute little sunscreen compact, comes with a mirror, a little cushion puff. So it's straight up sunscreen, non-tinted sunscreen. So compared to my Skin Better Compact from last week or two weeks ago, that one was tinted heavily and acted more like a foundation, whereas this is gonna be mainly just sunscreen. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply it. Just gonna like push a little bit here, two pushes. You could see the product on the puff. And let's just do it on one side of my face. Initial application. I can definitely see the whiteness. <laughs> okay, here's what I look like. This is the side that I applied it on. This is the side without. I definitely have like a white cast over this half of my face. And it also totally covered up my blush as well as my contour that I had on. And I was trying to not dirty the puff by getting it over my lipstick or too close to my eyes. And now therefore I have like a ring of normal skin around my eyes and then white cast around it. It looks a little bit silly. I think I would drastically prefer a tinted sunscreen in that compact, but it was good to try it out. Alrighty, I hope you enjoyed this part one of reviewing a few Asian sunscreens, all Korean sunscreens actually. And then next week we'll be back to review four more sunscreens, all the most popular ones from Korea, including some that you've definitely heard of before, like Beauty of Chosan, Isn't Tree, Gila 8, Tan Make, which is actually Japanese, and Dr. Dark. It'll be five plus. We'll see you back next week. And as usual, if you have any comments or any questions, please leave them below. And don't forget to subscribe and follow and come back next week. Bye.